Imagine standing in what is now West Texas, 367 million years ago. You look up and see a fireball streaking across the sky. It's not a shooting star. It's a 1,500-foot-wide asteroid traveling at 40,000 miles per hour. And it's about to hit the ground just 30 miles from where you're standing. The impact creates a crater over three miles wide and releases more energy than a thousand nuclear bombs. This actually happened. And it's just one chapter in the absolutely insane geological story of Texas. Stick around, because what I'm about to show you will completely change how you see the Lone Star State. What's up, everyone? Today, we're diving deep, and I mean deep, into the geology and geography of Texas. Most people think of Texas as cowboys, oil fields, and endless plains. But beneath your feet is a story that spans nearly two billion years. A story of ancient oceans, catastrophic impacts, volcanic eruptions, and geological forces that literally shaped the modern world. Texas is the second largest state in America, covering 268,000 square miles. But size isn't even the most interesting thing about it. Texas has one of the most geologically diverse landscapes on the planet, with rocks from almost every major geological period on Earth. So buckle up, because we're about to travel through time. Let's start at the very beginning. 1.7 billion years ago, before animals, before plants, before even oxygen-rich air, the rocks that would become the foundation of Texas were forming. In the Llano Uplift region of central Texas, you can still see these ancient Precambrian rocks exposed at the surface today. We're talking about granite and gneiss, metamorphic rocks that formed under intense heat and pressure deep beneath ancient mountains. These rocks are part of what geologists call a craton, the stable core of a continent. This was part of one of Earth's first supercontinents. But here's where it gets wild. Texas hasn't always been Texas. Over the next billion years, the landmass that would become Texas drifted around the globe. It was sometimes near the equator, sometimes near the South Pole. Continental collisions created and destroyed mountain ranges. About 550 million years ago, during the Cambrian period, something dramatic happened. Sea levels rose and Texas began to flood. For hundreds of millions of years, most of Texas was underwater. And I'm not talking about a little flooding. I'm talking about warm, shallow tropical seas teeming with life. Seas that covered everything from the Gulf Coast to the Panhandle. During the Ordovician, Silurian and Devonian periods, roughly 485 to 360 million years ago, Texas was home to coral reefs, trilobites, ancient fish, and massive sea scorpions called Eurypterids that could grow up to eight feet long. These ancient seas left behind thousands of feet of limestone, compressed remains of countless marine organisms. This limestone is everywhere in Texas today. The Texas Hill Country, limestone, the Edwards Plateau, limestone. And here's the kicker. Those ancient seas are why Texas became rich. When these marine organisms died, they sank to the bottom and were buried under sediment. Over millions of years, heat and pressure transformed this organic material into oil and natural gas. The Permian Basin in West Texas, one of the most productive oil fields in the world, is literally the fossilized remains of an ancient ocean. But the seas didn't last forever. About 300 million years ago, during the Pennsylvanian and Permian periods, two continental masses collided. This collision created the supercontinent Pangaea, and Texas was right in the middle of it, literally. The collision pushed up massive mountain ranges, including the ancient Wachita Mountains, which stretched across what is now Oklahoma and Arkansas. 
But remember that asteroid I mentioned at the beginning, 367 million years ago, during the Devonian period, when much of Texas was still covered by shallow seas, a massive asteroid slammed into the Earth near present-day McKamey, Texas. The Santa Rosa impact structure, as it's now called, created a crater over three miles in diameter. The impact would have triggered massive tsunamis in the ancient sea, ejected millions of tons of debris into the atmosphere, and caused localized devastation. But here's what's crazy. We only discovered this impact crater in 2008. It's buried under thousands of feet of sediment and rock layers. Scientists found it by analyzing subsurface geological data from oil exploration. This discovery reminds us that Earth's surface is like a history book, and we're still reading it, finding new chapters we never knew existed. Now, fast forward through the age of dinosaurs. Yes, dinosaurs lived in Texas too, but that's a video for another day, and we get to about 65 million years ago. Around 65 to 30 million years ago, during what geologists call the Laramide Orogeny, incredible geological forces were at work. The Pacific tectonic plate was sliding beneath the North American plate, causing massive compression and uplift. This is what created the Rocky Mountains, and it affected Texas too. In far west Texas, the Franklin Mountains near El Paso and the Davis Mountains were pushed up during this time. And here's something most people don't know. Texas had volcanoes. In Big Bend National Park, you can see the remnants of ancient volcanic activity. The Chisos Mountains are made of volcanic and intrusive igneous rocks. Between 46 and 32 million years ago, this region was an active volcanic field. As the climate changed and North America drifted northward, Texas became drier. The lush tropical environments gave way to grasslands and deserts. The Chihuahuan Desert expanded into West Texas. But at the same time, along the Gulf Coast, something else was happening. Rivers from the newly formed Rocky Mountains were carrying massive amounts of sediment eastward, building up the Texas coastal plain. The Mississippi River, the Rio Grande, and countless other rivers deposited layer after layer of sand, silt, and clay. This is why the geography changes so dramatically as you travel across Texas. You're literally moving through different geological time periods and environments. So, after nearly two billion years of geological drama, what do we have today? Modern Texas can be divided into several distinct geographical regions. The Gulf Coastal Plains cover the eastern third of Texas, flat, humid, with barrier islands and marshes. This is where you'll find cities like Houston and Corpus Christi. The North Central Plains are characterized by rolling hills and prairies. This is classic ranch country. The Great Plains stretch across the Panhandle and West Texas, flat to gently rolling terrain that gets progressively drier as you go west. The Basin and Range Province in far west Texas includes dramatic mountain ranges separated by desert basins. This is where Big Bend National Park is located. The Edwards Plateau, or Texas Hill Country, is an elevated limestone region carved by rivers into scenic hills and valleys. This is where you'll find Austin and San Antonio. The elevation in Texas ranges from sea level at the Gulf Coast to over 8,700 feet at Guadalupe Peak in West Texas, the highest point in the state. Texas has over 3,700 named streams and 15 major rivers. It has pine forests in the east, deserts in the west, and everything in between. This diversity exists because of that incredible geological history. Billions of years of oceans rising and falling, continents colliding, volcanic eruptions, and erosion. So why should you care about rocks that formed billions of years ago? Because Texas geology 
directly impacts modern life. Oil and gas, that ancient Permian Sea I mentioned, it's why Texas is an energy powerhouse. The state produces more oil than any other US state. Water resources, the Edwards Aquifer formed in that limestone from ancient seas provides drinking water to over 2 million people, including San Antonio. Agriculture, different soil types created by different geological processes make some regions perfect for cotton, others for cattle ranching, and others for citrus fruits. Natural hazards, understanding the geology helps predict earthquakes. Yes, Texas has earthquakes, especially in areas where wastewater from oil production is injected underground. Fossils and tourism. Texas is one of the best places in America to find fossils. You can literally walk through Big Bend or the Texas Hill Country and find fossils from creatures that lived millions of years ago. The geology of Texas shaped its economy, its culture, and its identity. So the next time you're in Texas, whether you're driving through West Texas desert, swimming in the Gulf, or hiking in the hill country, remember, you're standing on nearly two billion years of Earth history. Texas wasn't always Texas. It was ancient seabed, it was tropical forest, it was volcanic wasteland, it was endless grassland. The rocks beneath your feet have traveled around the globe, survived asteroid impacts, and witnessed the rise and fall of countless species. And honestly, I think that's way cooler than just being big. If you enjoyed this deep dive into Texas geology, smash that like button and subscribe for more geology and geography content. Drop a comment below telling me what surprised you most. Was it the asteroid impact, the ancient seas, the volcanoes? And if you want me to cover the geology of another state, let me know which one. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.